Hey guys, and welcome into this special Thursday, March 28th edition of the Five Star News. I'm Carter Smith. And I'm Jackson Bibb. And Carter, spring break is so close now, you can almost taste it. It sure is, and I'm so ready for that week off. Me too, but we have a ton of news to get to everyone before we can officially call it a wrap. So let's get this show started with Emily Damron, Ava Phillips, and Roy Pepper with What's Up Heritage. Thank you for that nice introduction, guys. I'm Emily, and this is Ava, and we have a few big announcements to tell y'all. So let's get into it. There will be a spring plant sale this weekend, Friday and Saturday. Friday will be from 9 to 4, and Saturday will be from 9 to 2. There will be a variety of spring bedding plants, herbs, baskets, and vegetables. Come check it out. There will be no school Friday because it is going to be a school holiday. Hope all of you have a good, good Friday and spring break. Also for seniors who attended Wood Station Elementary School, there will be a Wood Station homecoming for seniors at 8.15 a.m. All students need to provide their own transportation. Now let's get on over to Rory for the four-day weather forecast. Thanks, Ava. Yes, let's jump right into the four-day weather forecast. This weekend is going to be pretty cloudy, starting out with Thursday with a cloudy day with a high of 65 and a low of 49. Friday, it will be sunny with a high of 69 and a low of 45. Saturday, it will be cloudy with a high of 66 and a low of 38. And Sunday, it will be cloudy once again with a high of 70 and a low of 43. Have a great weekend and spring break. Now let's go on to Jackson and Carter for more news. Thanks, ladies. Good stuff. To the news now, and we'll get things going with crazy action that took place in our public safety classes late last week. Sure will, and Jackson, we were lucky enough to get to participate in this drill put on by Officer Edwards in his criminal investigation class. It was so much fun. Quick intro here. Public safety students were serving fictitious warrants and had to enter buildings to find the suspect. How did the students do? Here's Five Star News reporters Jackson Ben, myself, and Parker Scott with the report. All right, so this week, um, our criminal investigations class has been working on serving search warrants and arrest warrants. They've had to go through the process of actually... Hang on. This guy's sheriff's office, we have a warrant! Ready? Ready? And they had to execute the warrants that they had applied for throughout the week. So what we're doing today is we're doing our final evaluations for search and arrest warrants. Um, we trained Monday and uh, all the following classes uh, have led up to this. Uh, our first level class we did uh, building searches, second level was tactical operations. This is uh, search and arrest warrants. Get out of there! Y'all are standing right in the fatal funnel. Go in! <laughs> they just got done doing that today and everything seems like it went really well. All of the teams performed excellent, um, and I'm really proud of them. They did a great job. Uh, we had a, a no-knock warrant uh, that was approved, which is just going in without a knock, so they don't know we're coming. But the curveball was, was it was dated for yesterday, or I'm sorry, two days ago, and they're only good for 24 hours. So unfortunately, we did not get the no-knock warrant, but we still went in there, and we dealt with business. There's, there's a whole lot of danger involved in that, especially if you're going into a search warrant type scenario, and I believe all the teams handled that very well today. We were fortunate to get out of that assignment all in one piece, Carter. Sure were, but it was a ton of fun and it looked like the students were learning a lot. Speaking of fun, it sure did look like most of our freshman class had some, early, had some fun earlier this week as I went through the Reality U presentation in the auxiliary gym on Monday. Reality U is where ninth graders go through various real life scenarios and encounter things like buying a house or car and budgeting for those expenses. What else did they learn? Here's Five Star News reporters David Butler and Parker Scott with more in the report. Hey Generals, uh, Superintendent Nix, so excited to be here today to uh, share Reality U with you and just walk around and talk to you and uh, just see how things are going. Okay, today we're doing Reality U. Reality U is a financial literacy experience where students take a survey about when they're 26 years old, sometime in the future. And for the survey, you choose whether you're gonna be married, have children, um, and kind of what your life will be like in the future. Um, basically that a lot of people are going to be broke once they're older and it's very hard to do everything you need to do with just little amounts of money you're given. So, Yeah, that's a great question. Um, Reality U is an incredible program that we uh, use at all three of our high schools. Uh, Communities and Schools puts it on and they do a fabulous job uh, with uh, helping kids to adult. 
And then we also take into account your GPA and maybe your attendance and tardies. And from all of that, we get a scenario for you with a monthly salary. So if your GPA is a little bit lower, your options for employment might be a little bit lower salary. Uh, it's pretty awesome because you get to see like what's going to happen whenever you go to an adult. And that's really what it's all about, uh, showing kids, hey, here's the job you have. Here's how much money that you're going to make. And a lot of those things are going to determine what you drive, where you live. Uh, who you marry, where you go to school, where your kids go to school, and what kind of toys you have. Um, definitely gonna have to be more social. Uh, you're gonna, I'm gonna have to manage more money, and you're just gonna have to put a lot of stuff into savings. And we do this in ninth grade because your GPA can really change um, from ninth to twelfth. So once you get your salary, you go around to about twelve tables we have representing all kinds of bills that you have to pay when you're an adult. Thanks for letting me come over today. Uh, I hope this news story today gives you a little bit of insight in about reality you and what it's all about. Go Generals. Looks like the freshmen enjoyed it a little bit. Yes, and now onto a story from late last week that I know everyone enjoyed. Yes, yes, the annual HHS talent show. It was definitely one of my favorites from the last few years. Yeah, me too. I love seeing Bobby and the teacher band. No doubt. Let's see more of the show now and hear some reactions as well. Here's Five Star News reporters Court Babin and Deacon Lewis with a report. Yo, what's up? I'm Caleb. I watch the talent show. Uh, I really liked it. I thought there was a lot of diversification from p recent years. Um, I really liked the dance numbers. The, the Silver Jacket and Pom Poms act was really good. Um, I think my favorite act overall was Mr. Wynn when he sat down with Miss Hamilton. Um, it really made a ripple effect in the rest of my day and how, how I went about my day. It really affected me and I went back to class a better person. I just really like the talent show because it gives me a space to just be super open and have a lot of fun. And I think everyone did so well this year. We had a great show. I want to give a shout out to everyone who uh, put together and participated in the talent show. You guys have some amazing talent. Um, it was absolutely an incredible show this year. I want to give a special shout out to the students and the faculty members uh, for putting together the tribute. It was really touching, emotional. Joel would, would be proud of how you guys represented him on stage this year. So thanks to everyone and great talent show this year. So uh, I like the talent show. I like the teachers. The teachers did very good jobs in their parts, especially Miss Hamilton. I love Miss Hamilton. I thought the talent show was like all right. I specifically kind of enjoyed like Isaiah Dennis's uh, Leonard Skinner. I thought that was pretty good. I don't know, there's like bits and pieces where I thought like it was enjoyable, but other than that, it was just kind of just fun way to get out of class, I guess. Um, in my opinion, the talent show wasn't the greatest, but some parts were good, some parts weren't. It was just like, I don't know, it was just real boring, in my opinion, on some parts. And then like the singing part and the guitarist were pretty good, pretty good. like the teacher band, that was funny, it was great. Good stuff there, guys. Thanks for that report. Time for a break now, but hang with us for sports. Baseball, soccer, and tennis coming your way next. Good morning, Generals. Uh, 
I got, we've got some very exciting news to talk about. Uh, we are indeed, for sure, fielding a flag football team with our young ladies uh, starting this coming fall, fall of 2024. Um, flag football is a sanctioned sport in, uh, with the GHSA. Uh, so this is not a club sport. This is an actual school sport uh, now. Uh, it's been around about three or four years. We, we uh, reached out and, uh, to get some interest several years ago, and uh, we weren't really ready yet, but we are 100% on board now. We are having a football team next year. Your head coach will be the one and only Alan Broom. Coach Broom will be the head coach, the greatest interim head coach in the history of Heritage High School. Uh, but, uh, no, co coach is already fired up. We've had a lot of student-led interest, uh, especially by Miss Addie Dills. She came to me like five times in the last two weeks wanting to start this. So I'm, we're so blessed for her and, uh, for, you know, for her initiative and whatnot. Had our first meeting and sign-ups yesterday. It's not too late, ladies, to, uh, to sign up. And uh, Coach Broom, um, Coach Broom has some plans as well. So, um He'll, he'll talk to you about, you know, if you're a fall athlete, whether or not you can participate uh, and whatnot. So, um, uh, so anyway, we're very, very excited about, about starting this. All right, so uh, finally, Heritage High School will uh, start a, a girls flag football team this coming fall. Big shout out to Addie Dills, who has taken the bull by the horns and has basically been the impetus for us getting this whole ball uh, rolling downhill and it's become basically an avalanche at this point. There's a Google Class uh, code if you're interested in signing up that will be posted probably on this side of me, I'm guessing, something like that. It'll keep you uh, informed, It'll have uh, information about tryouts, and it has a link to rules and last year's state champion who I anticipate will probably be in our classification. Anyway, we're excited and uh, if you play a spring sport or no sport at all, or if you want to try to come out after your uh, fall sport, please feel free to come check it out. I hope to uh, see as many people as possible. Hello, Generals, and welcome into sports. I'm Owen Carstens. And I'm Court Babin, and we are talking general sports with you on this Thursday. Yes, we are, and we will begin with baseball. In Court, there was not much time to celebrate our three-game series sweep with Cedartown last week. Sure wasn't, because region power Central Carrollton rolled into town this week for y'all's three-game series with the Lions. Sure did. Could Coach Stinger's boys avoid the raindrops and take, take the series. Here's five-star sports reporters B. Ford and Andrew Moore with the series update. Uh, Central came in um, and they took the win uh, eight to seven, uh, not without a strong finish uh, from the Generals. We were down eight to one going into the bottom seventh. We fought back. Um, one inning hurt us, then we kind of Got distracted and wasn't paying a whole lot of attention to what was going on in the game. Uh, but we uh, rallied there in the seventh. She came up a little short. Uh, but we get two more chances at them on Friday uh, at their place uh, to kind of go for the, the series win, uh, which are big. So we've got to get some practice in, uh, some more cuts, uh, and some bull bullpens for our guys so they can continue to throw strikes. So we played Central Carrollton uh, Monday. You know, it didn't turn out how we wanted it to. Uh, we lost 8-7. Um, you know, I thought Max still threw a pretty good game. Um, you know, it's just some unfortunate stuff happened to him. I thought he threw the ball really well. Um, didn't get a lot of calls that went his way. Um, obviously, it's no excuse, but he didn't throw a bad game. Uh, we, they just had one big inning where they scored all of their runs in one inning. Um, you know, we just got to work on being able to uh, cut down those runs. Um, you know, I mean, it's just unfortunate that some of that stuff happens. Um, we came, I mean, we, we had a good comeback. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't pull it out. Uh, you know, Max had a shot to center. Unfortunately, the kid was just standing right there to catch it. You know, um, just little stuff that we need to limit. Um, I think we'll be fine. We go and play them Friday. Um, I think I'm throwing game one. JC's throwing game two. Um, I think we got a really good shot to uh, take both of those games down there. It's a long drive, but I think we'll be all right. Tennis now, and our boys and girls team spent the early part of this week down in Dalton at Lakeshore Park taking part in their region tournament. 
Both the boys and the girls entered their tourneys as number three seeds. So a first round win would punch their ticket to the state tournament next month. But one win wasn't all the teams were looking for, Owen. They were shooting for the championship trophy. Could the guys and girls pull off three wins? Here's Coach Green with the match recaps. We went down to Dalton for our region tournament. We started out our day playing Southeast and um, we quickly beat them winning three courts. We had wins from both of our doubles and then um, John Keith and Cade Green also won and Kevin Yang. So everyone pulled out a win on that first match. Then um, we regrouped and played Central. And um, Central was the number two seed in the tournament and we felt strong going in to play them. Um, and we were tied with them two and two. Um, we had wins from John Keith at number two singles and then from our number two doubles, Colin Cooper and Matt Keith. And it came down to the last match, number three singles at Cade Green. And Cade gave it all he could um, with an injury and then lost by just a few in a tiebreaker. So it's 2-2. Two, two. Cade's match is still out. Cade wins his second set, 6-1. Uh, he killed the guy in the second set, playing really well. The injury's not really killing him. He's moving okay. I had to have the trainer come out and look at him. So it gets to the third set tiebreaker. You got to get 10 first, and it's 6-6. Six, six. We had a really long point. We thought Kate had hit a winner. Everybody was going nuts. He was going to be up 7-6. The guy calls the score 7-6 central, which means he took that point, which is a really crucial point in the match. Could have went either way. They took it, and the guy won three more points. So he wins at 10-6. It puts us from playing for the championship into the third, fourth match against Northwest. We went up against Northwest. Again, it came down. Um, to, we had won two matches. John Keith won at number two singles, and Colin Cooper and Matt Keith won at number two doubles. And it came down to our number one doubles, and they just couldn't pull out the win. It was a strong um, number one doubles team from Northwest. So we ended up in the region for fourth. Um, we're waiting to hear who we play for our first round of state. We're very proud of the boys. Um, they worked hard all day. It was a long day, and they, they gave it their all. We just came up a little short. Uh, overall, we all played hard. We all played good. Congrats to both teams, and good luck in the state tourney. To soccer now, and both of our teams have been playing pretty well over the past couple of games, Court. Tough losses for both down at Northwest last week but two wins at Lafayette on Friday. What have they been up to this week? Here's Five Star Sports reporters Owen Bryant and Brody Morrison with a soccer update. Um, our guys traveled to Southeast last night. Uh, rain came through in the morning, but it turned out to be a beautiful evening at Southeast. They have new turf down there. Um, and our guys came out with, to play a determined, or played determined, played hard. Um, all of the players saw the field. It was a tight first half. We just couldn't generate much offense. Uh, eventually, they ended up getting a penalty kick um, toward the end of the first half and went up one nothing. but the guys kept playing. Um, ben Breedlove had a good game in the middle. Andrew Cass had a good game. The defense held up. And then uh, eventually, we gave up a second goal to lose 2-0 last night. Um, well, last night, we went to Southeast, and we played a really well, good game, but um, we didn't come out with the win. Um, something we could definitely work on is our midfield. Um, we lost Cruz earlier in the season, and that's been a real um, setback. But, I mean, we've come a long way, but we still need to improve there, especially since we're going to be going to state and playing the, the one seed in some other area. Um, Southeast was a lot quicker than us, and we had a lot of 50-50 balls because we just had to clear the ball. But I think that we did good. I think that we had a good game. And I think that if we played the ball quicker and – we made the passes better on the ground. We would have had a lot more chances to score, but they were just quicker in general. Um, definitely being quicker. I think being quicker is one of the things that we need to work on, and I think that passing on the ground and our communication will help us be able to get goals. Um, Cadence, she's a good leader, and I think that throughout that game, she really helped us get to where we needed to be. She kept everyone calm, and she kept the game moving, and even when we did get scored on, we were able to overcome it because of how Cadence acted throughout the game. 
Thanks for support, you guys. And now let's get into some entertainment. We'll start with one of our favorites, Game Ray. Yep, what video game is Kieran Free dissecting today? Not sure, but looking forward to his critique. Take it away, Kieran. Hello, and welcome back to Game Rate, where we rate your favorite games based on story, gameplay, and graphics. I'm your host, Kieran, and today we'll be covering Subnautica. Made all the way back in 2014, Subnautica is a survival game that takes place in a vast ocean with many places to explore. So let's explore the basics of Subnautica. Like I said earlier, Subnautica is a survival game, so you're tossed into the deep end of an ocean planet filled with alien life. Actually, the starting area is pretty shallow compared to some other places, but whatever. You start off with only a fabricator and whatever your trusty escape pod has in its storage. The game doesn't really have quests, more like suggestions on what to do next. And your main goal is to escape the planet you're on and return home. But if you only focus on that, you'll miss some good lore. So let's get on to covering the story. Hi, you're on a Wait, I already did this bit. Um, okay. <clears throat> you're on a nice flight through space when the ship you're in gets a bit too close to planet 4546B and most likely gets shot down while leaving you and a few other people to get to the escape pods to try and survive. While your escape pod is rapidly approaching the surface of the planet, a metal panel gets all lovey-dovey with your forehead and knocks you out. When you wake up, you realize two things. One, that metal panel probably gave you a concussion. And two, oh my god, the escape pod's on fire. And anyways, after finding the two islands the game has to offer, you learn that the other escape pods failed. And basically, this planet has the flu. AKA, a lot of the wildlife on this planet is infected by a deadly bacteria, and it's up to you to cure it. Oh yeah, and you're infected too. Obviously. <laughs> so some people in a ship called the Sunbeam, oh, wrong picture, Th there we go, try to save you, but get shot down by the same thing that shot down the nice flight you were on, on the Aurora. Also, did I mention at some point that the Aurora was Anyways, there's also a huge dying creature called the Sea Emperor Leviathan. Hatch its eggs and save the species, and oh my god, there's way too much to cover here. 9 out of 10 story. Wonderful. I love it. My favorite part is being in massive amounts of debt. One trillion credits. After getting back to your home planet. Gameplay time. <laughs> the gameplay is pretty simple. Explore, collect, fabricate, build, explore some more, get distracted by all the lore, and eventually escape and leave a time capsule with stuff for other people to find, even though there's no multiplayer, but hey, at least it's got some online function. Throughout the game, you'll only drown a couple hundred times, but it's fine, at least you keep your items, most of them. Overall gameplay gets a 7 out of 10. Pretty fun, name my Seamoth Pickle Wreck and made it green customization. And finally, graphics. It's beautiful. Not as beautiful as some other games on the list, but still, it's beautiful. 9 out of 10. I feel like if I crash landed on an ocean planet, it would look like this. Fabulous for a game made in 2014. So that brings us to the total. What, what is the total? Well, let's just do some simple math and uh, boom. 8 out of 10. Love this game and it might not be your type of game, but give it a try. You might be surprised. Now, let's get you back to the anchors. See ya. Good job, guys, and now for our last segment of the day. Are you ready for some music? I hope you are, because me and Core have a pretty good finish to the lyric headed your way next. Did you make the cut this week? Let's find out. Welcome in, everybody, to finish the lyric. Welcome back. Episode five. I finished the lyric today. Uh, great show today. So we're gonna we're gonna try to get right into it right now as fast as possible. So let's go find some people. Yeah. Uh, he has my mic. Steven Solomon. You know what's up? Yeah, he's back. He's got a two and zero record. So uh, let's get let's see if he can get three now. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Let's get right into it. How much money you got? A lot. How much money you got? A lot. How many problems you got? A lot. How many people done doubt you got? Left you out to rot. I can't, I can't go any more than that. You gotta keep going. Like, it, it's it's inappropriate though. And who am I here with today? Noah. And uh, are you ready to finish this lyric today? Yeah. Alright, here we go. 
When you rich like this, you don't check the forecast, every day it's gonna rain. I think people know who this is, but who are we here with today? Uh, you got Coach Green with you. Green? One and one. One and one on the, one one the year so far. Yeah. So, are you ready to finish this league today? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, let's get right into it. Let's go. Hello, in the morning, like my, my girl said what you want to do with your life. It was close. It was close, but Cindy Lauper got it wrong. Coach Green, I mean, my words sounded better. Oh, I, I can see why. That was bad, man. One on two in a day. We went three and oh the past two episodes both times. So uh, we got to get better. We need Coach Green to actually get a, get one correct. He's uh, one for two. Like, uh, I don't know. But, um, you know, Steven Solomon's three and oh. That's pretty good, I guess. He gets. He, I might have gave him some easy songs, but uh, yeah, that's it for today. And with that, we'll wrap up this Thursday edition of the Five Star News. We won't see you again until a week from Tuesday. So have a great spring break, everyone, and, and stay classy heritage.